Theodore Beza, Icones, John Huss, Episode 3. Queen etiam dicti mirabile, tot illos qui etiam tum sunt auditi, et nunc ad hoc audi untur, lordres tibi succinentes, cur non merdrito velut ex foi condissimis tuis foinicus potius, quam anseris, canerdribus, quod etiam dicaris iam iam moraturdrus praedixisse, enatos dixerdrimus? Crematus est vivus, violata publica fide constantiae, ex pseudo synodi decreto, anno domini, etc. As Beza concludes this portion of his discussion, his eulogy of John Hussey says, But even then, remarkable to say, mirabile dictu, so many of those who, even at that time, were listened to, and even now are still heard, so many olordres, now an olor is a swan, it's another way of saying kicknus, so many of those swans, tibi su kinentes, who were singing in unison with you, tibi su kinentes, why, cur non merito, why do we not deservedly say, cur non merito dixerdremus, or why shall we not have deservedly said, because this is a future perfect indicative why shall we not have deservedly said that they were born a natos, and we have to supply essa, that they were born, as it were, from the very fertile, foicundissimis, superlative adjective, from the very fertile ashes, caneribus, of yours, or from your very fertile ashes of a phoenix, foinicus, rather than of a goose. Now, the foinicus and anseris here are both masculine singular and genitive. So remember that the name Hus means goose in the Slavic language, in the Czech language, and this is part of the extended metaphor which Beza is using. Although Hus is a goose in Anser, the way that so many other reformers came from his most productive ashes means that he is more of a phoenix, that mythological bird who rises again. He's more of a phoenix than he is a goose. And so we see that X foicundissimis tuis caneribus, those all go together, with caneribus being the object of the preposition ex, modified by foicundissimis and tuis, from those very fertile ashes of yours, more of a phoenix, foinicus, than of a goose, why do we not say that those so many swans, singing in unison with you, why do we not say, or why shall we not have said, that they were born, a natos? And then we have this parenthetical, which fact, quote, that there would be many uh, successors from Hus, even you are reported, dikeres, present indicative passive, you are reported to have predicted, praedixissa, at that very moment, yam yam, that you were about to die. So that's a fairly rough translation of the whole. Let's look a little more closely at some of the grammar. The whole thing is a question introduced by Queen, which means something like Kurnon, but why or why not even? Then we have the supine, dictu, mirabile dictu, remarkable to say. Why do we not even say dixerdremus? This is, as I said, a future perfect indicative from Dico. Why shall we not have said that those so many swans, tot illos olores, then we have a relative clause, who even at that time were listened to, these were the fellow reformers of Hus in his time, and even still now are listened to, and they were su kinentes. So this is a participle, which means to sing together in unison, and it's masculine, plural, and nominative. Excuse me. It's masculine, plural, and accusative, modifying alores, singing in unison with you. Why shall we not have deservedly said that they were enatos? So this is from a nascor to be born or to spring up. It's a third conjugation, deponent verb, a nascor, a naski, and here it is with an implicit esse, because it's orati obliqua, indirect statement. Why shall we not say that they were born, ex cineribus, from the ashes of a phoenix, foinicus, rather than of a goose, and they are foicundissimis tuis, your very fertile or productive ashes, because, of course, Hus was burned at the stake. Then we have this parenthetical from quod, and the antecedent of quod is all that comes before. This fact, that there would be many fellow swans born from your ashes, you are even said to have predicted at the very moment of your death, yam yam moriturus. 
Then we have this concluding pro postscript. He was burned alive, crematus est vivus, through a violation of the public trust of Constantii, based on that decree, decreto, of the false synod, pseudo synodi, in the year of our Lord, Anno Domini, 1415, and it was on July 6. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that free lesson. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Latin Per Diem. And if you really love it, you can leave a tip right here as a super fan. Thank you so much.